It's so good to see each and every single one of you. What's going on, everybody? The world is a better place because you are here to join us. My name is Matt Brown, and I am the host of the Productive Conversations podcast. And it is Monday, September 23rd, 2024. And this is week four in the college football season, a recap, the productive recap, if you will, as I break down all of the big stories that took place from this past weekend in NCAA football. And before we get into all of that, before we talk about the big stories, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe to the Productive Conversations podcast on all podcasts and platforms and YouTube. And don't forget to check out exclusive content across all social media platforms, which include Productive Conversations on Instagram at Productive Conversations Podcast, Twitter and X at Prod Combo Pod, and we're on TikTok at Productive Conversations. So today, and also, I just want to thank our presenting sponsor, Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.com slash PCMB and use discount code PCMB20 for 20% off your first exclusive per, for your first purchase of Magic Mind or a monthly or 48% off your first monthly subscription of Magic Mind. And the reason why you want to get this product is because of its special ingredients. And you know, you, I have an example here. You, you, you take a shot just like this. It tastes amazing. It's a nice green tea shot. And before you know it, you have lower stress, your mind is sharper, your energy's bigger, and you have lower mental clarity, and it's easier to get out of bed. So you take this before you take magic mind right before the day begins and i promise you i promise 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 you your life will change for the better as it simply sharpens your mind lowers your stress and gives you better energy throughout the day so again magicmind.com slash pcmb and use discount code pcmb20 and get 20 percent off your first subscription sorry your first purchase or 48 percent off your first one-time purchase all right, good stuff, my friends, family, and the productive nation. Let's talk about college football. Week four in the college football season. We're already a quarter of what we're already a quarter away through the season. And now we really can see who are the good teams, the mid teams, the best teams, and all of that. And as we get closer and games are more meaningful, especially with the conference championships meaning so much because it will determine where you are. It will determine you getting your bid to get in the college football playoff, and it will, you know, determine where your seeding is. And as we enjoy this first season with the college football playoff, see who the top 12 teams are, every game really matters from here on out, and everything has a little more weight. So let's talk about these various programs and see where they are on their journey to the college football playoff. And... The team everybody likes to talk about in college football, Colorado, Coach Prime's team, they get a big overtime victory over Baylor, 38-31. to And the two crucial plays that were fun to watch includes Shador Sanders' Hail Mary at the end of the fourth quarter to get them into overtime. And then they actually get a score in overtime, and they need to stop Baylor. You know, they need to stop Baylor in the red zone, and they do, thanks to Travis Hunter, the two-way player, playing both your cornerback and wide receiver, this time at the defensive back position. He forces a fumble against Baylor. The ball goes back for a touchback, and everybody swarms the field. It was kind of funny, as if you saw the game, they swarmed the field during the review, but, you know, give credit to Deion Sanders for what he has done in rejuvenating that program and creating so much hype in the world of college football in the state of California. And even at times when Colorado seems to only be a two-man offense with Shador and Travis, Shador was able to get to another receiver. They were contributing for the touchdown. And even though the line created pressures and the line really needs to vastly improve, they were able to pull off the victory. And being in a very competitive Big 12 position, 12 division, and now staying at 3-1, and one, only losing Nebraska, as long as you have more convincing games, as long as you have, I should say, as long as you have more impressive victories, got to get more convincing wins for sure to try to separate yourself and get yourself ranked, then maybe we won't see as many doubters and more people will start taking this see this season more seriously sorry this team more seriously as they try to rise up the ranks and get in good position 
Every game matters. You're really going to only afford to lose a couple of games at any if you really want to make a case to win your conference so you could get in that playoff. But for now, you're just happy that co- if you're a Colorado fan, you're happy with the impressive victory, and they can at least show you that they that with their backs against the walls, even at home, they can pull off the victory. So good stuff, Colorado, right there. And for and another reason why you want to keep winning games, it's fair to say Travis Hunter is a high favorite to win the Heisman. If he was definitely on a more, if he was definitely on a ranked team. I think more people would be open to Travis Hunter winning the Heisman. And, you know, with all the bias and pomp and circumstance that turn people off from Colorado, it's easy to see, well, this is an unranked team. They can't win conference games, yada, yada, yada. But yet, as long as you could keep winning and stay consistent and have meaningful games in, this, in no, late November and into December – then it should be a lock for Travis Hunter to win. Even though my pick is the is the person we're going to talk about next, Travis Hunter and Colorado need to get more victories so that Travis Hunter is a sure lock as a two-way player to win the Heisman Trophy. But we will see what they do next week, but good win for Colorado. And for my favorite in your Heisman Trophy selection process, right, it's Cam Ward, and after he leads Miami to a 50-15 to victory over the University of Southern Florida, while he threw 404 yards in the air and scored three touchdowns, and did this on the road, by the way, the U stays undefeated. They stay ranked. And looking at the new polls really quick, forgive me one moment. Miami jumps up a spot. They are now ranked seventh in the country. All right, so pretty exciting for you you fans out there. But yeah, Cam Ward looks unstoppable, and the guy just threw over 1,500 yards in his college career. Looks like a pro out there, strong, can use his legs when he needs to, and he's a good he's good at reading offenses and helping the running game do well like they, he did this past week. Rushing the rushing attack, the rushing game was awesome for the U. And we can be very excited if you are a fan of the Hurricanes. I do expect on a December day we see at least Travis Hunter, Cam Ward, one of the two of the three finalists out there, waiting to see whose name is called for college football's biggest award. But for now, as long as he keeps playing this way, as long as he stays. T- as long as he leads a team, as long as the team stays undefeated, and they say high and they stay high in this ranking, especially in the ACC, there's no doubt in my mind the most dominant player out there is Cam Ward. And even if Travis Hunter may have a little more talent, because it is gives gives credit for the two way player out there, Cam Ward as the is your the best college football player right now. So accurate, so much fun to watch, and so badass. Good stuff from the U this past weekend. And the other quarterback people like to talk about, we have Arch Manning. With the number one ranked University of Texas, they have a non-threatening game against the University of, Louis- the University of Louisiana and Monroe. And in Arch Manning's debut, he goes 15 for 29, 250 yards, two touchdowns, a couple picks, but... The offense was still continuing to store thanks to Jaden Blue and his great running game, getting a couple touchdowns out there. March Manning looked fine. First start, you know, Quinn Ewers is week to week, but the number one team in the nation continues to stop, prevent people from scoring and still scores a lot of points. Good work there from Texas, right? Good, good work. My college picks, I won't lie, pretty bad. I go undefeated last week and I get reverse sweep this week. And I talked about this one game, USC versus Michigan, which at points looked like USC was going to cover. They swarm back late in the fourth quarter. And then Michigan swarms back again. They ultimately get the victory thanks to running the ball this time and still figuring out their quarterback, quarterback issues, whether it's between Donovan or Orgy. 
it's true in football. When you have two quarterbacks, you have none. And they just went back to some old school football and running the ball. And that's what led them to this comeback victory at home. Lincoln Riley still having trouble defeating ranked opponents. And I thought USC was going to get this, but I was wrong. But it was very close. Michigan got a slim 27-24 victory. You know, I mentioned Nebraska briefly, but they fall short against Illinois at overtime, knocking them out of the ranked, uh, knocking them out of, knocking them out of being a ranked opponent. And Illinois went up five positions and stay undefeated. And doesn't look like it looked good for Nebraska out there with the Patrick Mahomes lookalike, but Illinois, thanks to a solid defense. People swatting down the balls in the defend and the secondary, creating pressure, and there was no hope whatsoever for Nebraska. Too bad on that one. Good win for good, good win for Illinois. And then we have Notre Dame getting a convincing victory again, which people definitely want to see if you're a fighting Irish fan. A 28-3 victory over the University of Miami in Ohio, of course, leads to people being pretty happy about the about the Fighting Irish getting the win at home again. Even though they started off sluggish, quarterback wasn't making plays, wasn't getting a lot of separation from the defense, they did run away with it in the second half, and... Sorry, they started running away with it in the second quarter, and things fell all right. And Riley Renner, Riley Leonard, even though he played an okay game, only 150 yards in the air and a touchdown, 16 for 25. Notre Dame gets the win, rising up the ranks in the rankings again. They go from they go from 17 to 16. But after their northern their loss of Northern Illinois at home, they're trying to get as many convincing victories as possible. I'm sure they definitely wanted to separate themselves more against Miami and the Red Hawks. I believe that that's their the Red Hawks, right? But Notre Dame still gets a three touchdown victory. But I'm sure for against this opponent, they would like that have they would have liked to gone up a couple more touchdowns. But it is what it is. Notre Dame stays 3 and 1 at this point after this week. Now, Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma goes down 6 points in the rankings. They go up against Tennessee, another team. They were a 7 point favorite. Sorry, they were a 7 point underdog. Tennessee was a 7 point favorite. And they only went up a point went up and even in the bad karma didn't work. Ultimately, the bad karma after deciding to have a talent fee on their tickets. They only were rewarded with a huge victory over Oklahoma. Oklahoma winds up benching their quarterback in the second quarter due to him turning over the ball consistently, constantly, I should say. And Tennessee gets a big victory that they very much needed and they stay undefeated. And Oklahoma goes down six points, six rankings, and now they are 21 in the AP poll. But Boston College was exciting people. Nice walk-off touchdown from Thomas Castellanos. They ended Michigan State's undefeated season and their chance to get ranked. They wound up getting they wound up getting knocked. They wound up not providing that ranking that they needed, that big win they needed. And Boston College gets people hyped up once again, led by Brill O'Brien. Or we could talk about Utah running the ball all game long. They started their Big 12 debut against Oklahoma State. And as Oklahoma, as Utah State prevented Oklahoma from scoring during the game, and thanks to Micah Bernard, who could be a big, very, very big NFL prospect to watch out for, he only rushes for 182 yards, and Utah gets their big Big 12 debut victory. And now they go up two spots and now rank 10th in the nation. Some things to also celebrate. Florida State finally getting a win. 
And you could thank that to the seven sacks on defense, preventing Cal Berkeley from scoring a single touchdown. All they had was field goals. And though the offense wasn't anything to write at home about DJU once again, not being able to reach the end zone as much as he'd like or get some big plays on the field, but ultimately a win is a win. Florida State wins in front of their home crowd, and people can be a little more okay with what the Seminoles are doing. Florida State, one and three now, but get a much-needed victory over Cal Berkeley. And then probably the biggest game of the week to talk about in terms of just embarrassment, and the last thing we will discuss here, and mostly, you know, we also have Missouri having a tough game against Vanderbilt. They go down four points. Louisville keeps rising up the rankings as well. They go up three and Clemson getting a big victory as well. But the dis- the disappointing the disappointment if you are a North Carolina Tar Heels fan and James Madison scored 70 points against you while being a 11 and a half point underdog on the road no defense whatsoever. Barnett, the touchdown for John, James Madison, scores five touchdowns and turnover after turnover. And they tried their best to make a push, but ultimately it was over by the second quarter. The actual over under, like 45 points, it was already finished by the second quarter. And UNC embarrassed in front of their home crowds a good win for james madison a program that people like to see keep growing hopefully they can join a major conference or a power five conference very very soon maybe the big pac-12 will take them or the mountain west who cares about geographic locations at this point as long as you are in the continent of the united states you can be part of any conference clearly but that'll be our brief quick but solid and productive college football recap. We'll be back on Tuesday, on Thursday to give our college picks for week four. Let's obviously do the opposite of we, what we did this week. Tough week for me, weekend for me, but that's what's great about college football. There's always next week. So we'll be back on Thursday with college football picks for, for week five. Week five in college football picks. Check out our NFL week. Check out our NFL recap for week four in the NFL season. That is drop that has dropped with this episode as well, available on all podcasts and platforms and YouTube. And we'll be back a week from today to recap week five in the college football season. And we have some very exciting matchups to pay attention to during the final weekend of September. So let us do our research, watch this film, and enjoy it. My name is Matt Brown, and I am the host of the Productive Conversations Podcast. And again, I'll see you tomorrow for the 400th episode of Productive Conversations, a nice celebration with the crew, of course. All right, we'll see you all very soon. Enjoy.